Good evening. We want to welcome everybody to our AP Scholars Academy information meeting. Um, my name is Lindsay Jutzler. I'm happy to be here with you. I teach AP Chemistry and AP Research at Ashley Ridge. Um, I have with me um, Dr. Reeder, who teaches AP Physics, and um, Ms. Harris, who teaches AP U.S. History and AP Research, and then our assistant principal, Ms. Heidi Gary, who's going to be with us tonight. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat box, and Ms. Harris and Dr. Reeder will take care of those as we go, and then anything that needs to be addressed, we will certainly do so. At Ashley Ridge High School, we're committed to every student's success, and we believe that one of the ways for all students to achieve su success is to have access to rigorous coursework, like our Advanced Placement Program. So tonight we're going to start out by talking about what are the Advanced Placement courses that are offered at Ashley Ridge High School. Um, we have eight major disciplines where AP courses are offered. Um, we're going to talk about the benefits of taking AP courses versus um, early college or you know, some other avenue um, and the merits of taking AP courses. We'll dispel some myths and talk about really the realities from a student end of AP classes, um, the assessment for AP classes, the AP exams, and then what you need to do for your next steps if you're interested in taking an AP course or you're interested in expanding your AP course portfolio. So AP classes are um, college level courses that are offered at the high school. And this is a unique situation because you get the content that you would get in an introductory um, course at you know, top universities and colleges, but you get that with the support and the scaffolding of teachers, um, other students who are just like you and counselors. And that's something that you know, you're not going to get in um, the Trident Tech um, dual enrollment courses because that truly is a course offered at a at a uh, the physical location um, of the college with college professors, whereas AP classes are offered by high school teachers who understand your unique uh, needs and the constraints that you're under as as high school students. So at the end of AP course of your AP course, you will take an AP exam. For many courses, it's a multiple choice exam and then some sort of written portion, although some of our courses have performance based uh, assessments. And so that's specific to the course that you're in. And the point of the AP exam, um, it's administered through the College Board. They're going to measure your mastery of college level work. And the great thing is if you score a three, four or five, then you have the potential to earn um, college credit or placement um, in advanced courses in college. And so that's that's an awesome benefit of AP courses. At the end of this presentation, I'll show you where you can look at the courses that you're interested in and see what um, specific schools have for their requirements for what you have to score in order to place out of a certain course or take the credit for a certain course. So at Ashley Ridge, we have advanced placement courses um, from the arts. Um, we'll talk about the AP Capstone program. Recently this year, we've added a computer science course in our CTE um, discipline, which is excellent. We have English courses, history and social science courses, including several electives there, um, mathematics, sciences, and then our world language class is um, our AP Spanish. So let me talk a minute about our capstone program. Um, this is our third year of the capstone program, and this was something developed by the College Board where students engage in a two year process of authentic research. And so it truly is if you're um, going to college and you are going to do um, uh, an independent study, this is sort of the, the prep work for that. So in year one, students will take AP seminar and they will have both a team um, paper or project and presentation and then an individual research based uh, essay and presentation followed by the, the exam in, in May. And students who are successful um, in AP seminar would then move to AP research in year two. 
Um, AP research consists of the students writing one academic paper that's between 4,000 and 5,000 words, and then presenting um, that paper and going through an oral defense process. So it's a rigorous, um, it's a rigorous two years, but it's very preparatory for the advanced studies that you'll be doing in college. So it's, it provides a great framework for that. Students who successfully complete AP seminar and AP research, and when I say successful completion, I mean um, passing based on the college board's one to five scale. So one and two would not earn credit, whereas a three, four, or five would earn credit. So students who are successful um, with the seminar and research uh, portion would earn the um, AP capstone certificate, which many colleges, um, even Ivy League schools, look at very favorably. If students are interested in the AP capstone diploma, they would still take and pass AP seminar and AP research, but in addition to that, they would need to take and pass the um, AP exams for four additional AP courses, and they must be AP courses courses with the College Board AP designation. Um, so for example, if you are, at, are enrolled in um, a Trident Tech math course, that would not count towards your AP capstone diploma. Whereas if you were in um, AP computer science, that, that would count towards the, the four additional uh, courses and exams for the, for the capstone diploma. We are very fortunate to have this here. So um, we have been through now three cycles of students being able to take AP seminar, and we're coming up on two cycles of students being able to take AP research. And so we're, you know, this is a found great success. Our kids have enjoyed great success, and it's really a testament to how hard they have worked through this process. So to talk about some of the other pathways that you may choose um, to embark upon, if you would like to take um, an AP English course, we have AP Language and AP Literature. Um, typically, students can start taking those courses either in 10th grade or in 11th grade, depending on your prerequisite courses. And we'll talk about um, sort of the prerequisite courses um, in general for AP. If you are taking English and you have finished taking your AP Literature course uh, in 11th grade, that would be a great time to um, take AP seminar and then take AP research in the 12th grade. However, we do want you to know that AP seminar is not limited to the 11th grade. Um, there are some students uh, who could take it in the 10th grade. We recommend that you take it either concurrently with AP language or after you've taken AP language. You need that um, writing foundation to be successful in AP seminar. For our math courses, so this is going to follow um, a, a more rigid path than English because these courses are successive. So the earliest point that you would take an AP math course would be in the 11th grade. You could take AP Calculus, AB, or potentially AP Statistics if you wanted to um, double up on that. If not, then you could take AP Calculus in the 12th grade. If you are um, sort of on the fast track, for math, you could take your AP Calculus AB in the 11th grade, followed by AP Calculus BC in the 12th grade, and then again, there's um, statistics there. And AP Statistics is a great course for students who, you know, maybe are not interested in the STEM fields, but are more involved in the social sciences, and they're going to need to be able to um, analyze the, the data that's present in there. So that that's a good way to, you know, touch upon um, an AP course in the mathematics field without getting so heavily involved with, um, with calculus. Um, our science courses are a little bit more open. Um, typically in ninth grade, uh, students will either be in honors biology or in honors earth science. And then from there, um, after that ninth grade year, they can they have a couple of choices. They can move into um, honors chemistry, or if they've not taken honors biology, they would go there. If students have taken honors biology, they can elect to go to AP biology or to AP chemistry. Um, each of those courses, AP biology and AP chemistry, are 
year long block courses because they covered two semesters worth of college credit as opposed to just one. So we've been able to um, sort of bridge any gaps that may occur both in AP Biology and AP Chemistry because there's a little bit more class time in order to do that. Um, 11th grade, it, it opens up even more. So students can take, um, in addition to AP Biology or AP Chemistry, um, AP Physics C is a wonderful course. Um, and then we have AP Environmental Science. We found that students tend to be more successful in AP Environmental Science after they've had chemistry because it truly is a, um, a biochemistry based course. But students have that option to take um, to take that you know, whenever they choose. They need to have a conversation with the teacher of the course if they have questions. In our social sciences, um, so our social studies is unique in that students can start taking an AP course in the ninth grade. And typically, AP Human Geography is considered sort of the gateway course for um, an AP program because it trains students from the ground level up how to tackle this, this beast because it really is, you're kind of figuring out how to play the game of AP and AP Human Geography um, definitely provides the scaffolding to do that. So students can take that into, in the ninth grade. Um, from there, they would move on either to um, Modern World History Honors um, AP World History or AP European History. OK, and then they can also take starting in the 10th grade AP Psychology and that AP Psychology elective would be they could take that 10th, 11th or 12th. Um, from 10th grade, they would then go into um, either Honors US History or AP US History, keeping in mind that that is one of the requirements for graduation. So if they elect to take the AP US History, um, that would get their graduation requirement as well as um, be a, an AP course that they could add to their repertoire. And then in the 12th grade, there's AP Government and AP um, Economics. So history by far has the most um, offerings of AP courses. Our world languages, um, we do have the ability to teach AP French. However, this year um, we did not offer that. Um, we do have AP Spanish, and so typically AP Spanish is a senior level course. Um, students would either need to have Spanish 4 prior to that, or they could take Spanish 4 and um, AP Spanish concurrently. And then finally, in our um, arts department, um, we have 3D design, 2D design, fine arts, studio uh, art drawing and then music theory and those are more on a prescribed pathway that the students have to take um, prerequisite courses in order to get to that final level. So typically we don't see um, AP art courses until uh, the 12th grade year. However, there are some exceptions to that and that would be um, individual with, um, you would need to talk to the individual teachers about that. So what are the benefits of taking an AP course? And you're thinking long term. 85% of selective colleges and universities report that a student's AP experience favorably impacts their admission decisions. So, you know, if you're trying to distinguish yourself from the crowd, taking AP courses consistently every year is definitely going to provide you with that distinction. Colleges are going to rank uh, grades and college preparatory classes like AP courses, as well as the strength of your schedule as the top two factors in the admissions process. So while SAT and ACT scores are very important, um, many of the scholarships, especially those that are specific to specialized um, majors and programs, they're going to drill down and look at your course transcripts and see what you've taken. And by showing that you're willing to extend yourself and take those AP courses, um, you've shown that you're a hard worker and that you're not going to shy away from a challenge. The beauty of AP courses is that not only are you learning content, and that's certainly important, but something that's more durable and more important is are you building critical thinking skills and are you building confidence to answer 
questions and deal with problems that you're not you know, totally sure how to answer and how to deal with. And I think that um, from our perspective as AP teachers, the confidence in your and your um, development of your confidence is awesome, um, is an awesome benefit of AP courses. You really also have to deal with um, time management. Um, it's, it's a great way to kind of balance out how you would handle school life with extracurricular activities and potentially uh, sports and work um, while you're still in sort of a, a safe environment while you, you know, before you leave home. And then it really teaches you how to study. And I think that's one of the main things that we get across. You know, AP courses, it should not be harder to earn an A in an AP course you know, compared to any of the other courses. The material is more challenging. But ultimately, I think every AP teacher here wants to make sure that when a student leaves his or her classroom, that they have the tools to tackle um, complex situations, even if they don't pass the exam. I think the experience of an AP course is invaluable. And then nationally, research has shown that students who score a three or higher on an AP exam are typically going to have a higher GPA in colleges and higher graduation rates, and that's certainly important, especially if you are going to school in the state and you're trying to maintain your um, life or Palmetto Fellows scholarship. So that's that's important. So some of the things that we've heard is that, or that students may think is that AP courses are only for students who get good grades, and that's, that's not true. Students need to learn how to capitalize on their strengths. Um, Every AP course is not for every a for, for every student, but there are certainly enough offerings that students could pick and choose what they want to take. Any student who is academically prepared and motivated to take college level courses is invited to take and try AP. We are not focused on the score. We are focused on the process and the score should organically follow that process. Um, students may think that AP courses are too stressful. So yeah, AP courses are challenging because they're college level courses, but your teachers are aware of that. And usually our AP classes um, may have a, a smaller um, student roster. So you're going to receive more individualized support, both from your teachers and your classmates. Your teachers are more facilitators of your learning. And so you get sort of that back and forth conversation um, versus a constant lecture. So that will help you manage your, your workload. Students may think that they may not be able to score high enough on an AP exam to get college credit. And I'll show you in just a minute, but you don't need to score a five. A lot of the courses that we offer here, um, a three is gonna basically earn the credit for um, that particular course at a, at a given colleges at a given college. So don't be intimidated by the score of a five. Um, taking AP courses could hurt my GPA. So again, AP courses are weighted um, the same as a college level course. So you get those quality points on your GPA. And by taking a college level course, you're showing colleges again that you're willing to challenge yourself academically. You're, distingu you're distinguishing yourself from the pack. Um, I can't take AP because no one has recommended me. And this is something that really bothers all of us. Students, you're an advocate. Be an advocate for yourself. If you want to take an AP course and you have the motivation and the drive to do it, then you just need to talk to the um, AP teacher in charge of that course or your counselor or both, and we can make that happen. AP at Ashley Ridge is self-select. We're going to steer you in the direction in which you will be most successful, but we are not going to prevent you from taking an AP course if you've shown a willingness and a motivation to do so. The College Board feels strongly that all students deserve an opportunity to participate in rigorous and academically challenging courses and programs. So the College Board does not discriminate on the, base, on the basis of ethnicity, um, race, or socioeconomic groups that have been typ typically um, underrepresented in AP programs. Any and all students who are willing to accept the challenge of rigorous academic uh, coursework should be considered for admission to AP courses. And that's the big thing. Are you willing to accept the challenge? Then we want you. That, that, that 
to us is the number one determinant of your success is your ability to work and to and to be motivated and to try new things and not be afraid of failing. So now we'll move into the exam portion. So at the end of um, the course, um, typically in May, AP exams are administered are administered by the schools on um, dates that are set on a global level. So we don't have control over those dates. This year, if um, if we do have virtual students, um, there will be both paper exams given and virtual exams given. So our virtual students will be able to take um, virtual AP exams. And we'll talk more about that as we get closer um, to, to May. So colleges and universities are going to give credit um, or advanced placement within courses for qualifying exam scores. So right now, most of most colleges and all the colleges in South Carolina, all the public universities in South Carolina are going to grant students um, admission or credit for advanced placement courses. And because AP is universally recognized as the gold standard, um, if you go internationally, then your um, your courses and your credits are transferable as well. So each college is going to have their own specific policy for specific courses um, for the credit and placement. And this link here, you can, I'll click on this. Um, I'll show you just our two major universities in South Carolina, um, what they would consider as a passing score for college credit. But if you're interested in looking at specific courses or specific um, universities, you would click on that link. And this PowerPoint will be available on the website at the conclusion of this meeting so you can check. So I'll just go here. So I've just pulled up um, the University of South Carolina. And you can just scroll through the individual courses. And what I want you to notice is that very few courses require um, a five for placement or for credit. And that's an awesome thing because traditionally um, a three on the AP exam equates to like a high C or a low B in that college level course. So we feel like that um, that's attainable for most of our AP students. Now there are some courses to get um, both semesters of credit. If it's a course that has two parts, one in the fall, one in the spring at the college level, then the students would need to earn um, would need to earn a five. But as you can see, by far a lot of your courses, um, a three or a four will take care of the of the credit there. So what are the next steps that you need to take? Um, we have found it, students need to be engaged in uh, the course content. So um, students who are in the habit of missing class on a regular basis are going to have a harder time with AP classes. Um, you need to be present either virtually or um, in person. So that's a big determinant of your success. The other thing that students need to consider is what is your what's your workload like? Um, how much time outside of class do you have? And you know, as teachers, we're going to recommend that if you're interested in maintaining this AP pathway, that you um, don't overload your schedule. The College Board, not the teachers at Ashley Ridge High School. I mean, we support this, but the College Board recommends that um, every course is going to require approximately five hours. Um, a week of outside of class work. And when we say work, we're not necessarily talking like traditional homework. We're talking studying. And studying should be an active process where you are writing and you are thinking. So if you don't have the time, you know, if, if you only have time to devote um, to one or two AP classes a year, then that is perfectly acceptable. Please do not think that you have to overload, you know, with five, six, seven AP classes because that is very difficult to maintain for many students, especially those who are um, who are overworked. Um, some AP courses will have a summer work requirement and the teachers are very good about emailing that out. Um, to the students who are interested prior, 
prior to the school year being over. So I have a question. Um, could I describe um, what and when AP may be better than dual enrollment or vice versa? And um, should some kids choose the dual enrollment versus AP? So I'm unabashedly an AP supporter. I feel like um, AP is the gold standard for any college or university that you want to go to. So if you are looking at going to Furman or Walford, um, they may not accept the transfer credits from Trident Tech, or if they do accept those transfer credits, they may only accept them as elective credits or as um, partial credits. So if the course was eight hours, they may only take up to six hours. The other issue with dual credit is that many schools cap the number of transfer credit hours that you bring into the school. So if you know that there's a course within your um, major program of study that is, you know, definitely a, a weed out course and, and you don't want to take it at the college or university, if you've used up all of your transfer credits on general ed, um, requirements in high school and dual enrollment, then you're just out of transfer credits and you'll have to take um, you'll have to take that particular course at, at the college level. Um, the other thing to be mindful of is we have a lot of leeway with our grades at the AP level. So if we see that, you know, the majority of our students are struggling, we have the ability, um, really the responsibility to adjust and amend and pull back. We're here for the students. Um, Trident Tech, as, as, as wonderful as those dual enrollment classes may be, um, a student is another person in the class and just a, another person on the roster. So they're not necessarily looking out um, at the well-being of the student and are they are they learning? Because if a student passes or fails, the course is really not of consequence to that professor. Um, additionally, in an AP class, students have constant access to us. I cannot tell you the number of times, especially um, last spring, that we would have impromptu meetings if a student had a question. And even now, you know, we'll do um, study sessions at times that that work for students using um, Teams as an online platform. And I think that is important, um, especially as we're trying to build these skills and confidence in our students that they are able to ask us questions right when they have those questions. In the dual enrollment classes, um, you know, the, the professors are not here all the time. And so students just kind of have to get them um, when they when they can. And so I think that is a benefit to taking AP versus the dual enrollment. Now there are certainly cases where dual enrollment may be the way to go. And I think that would have to be discussed on an individual level. But for if you are planning on attending a four year um, college, then AP is going to provide you with more um, uh, portable and transferable um, units of credit. And the other thing, I'll just say this, um, you know, we don't necessarily encourage students to use that advanced placement credit in college. A lot of times we encourage them to retake the class and earn the easy A and keep their scholarship and have a, you know, a class in their schedule that is an easy thing to do so that they can focus on the other things that are, are more important. Typically, we tell the kids, um, for instance, if a student wants to major in political science, then if they take a science class, yes, we will say yes. If you pass AP biology, then take that credit and your science requirement is done. But if a student is going into um, pharmacy and they take AP chemistry and they get a three or four or even a five, I would absolutely recommend go take like retake the course again, earn your easy A and, you know, Students, remember, y'all are awesome tutors, and if you get to college and need to earn a little bit of um, extra spending money, you can tutor your classmates um, and charge, you know, whatever you want to charge for for that. But um, 
I, I really think that not necessarily taking and using all of those credits, but kind of picking and choosing where you want to put your AP credits um, it is helpful. So I hope that answered um, the distinction between, you know, when should you take an AP course and when should you take a, a dual enrollment course. So if you're kind of on the fence, um, typically we have an AP fair for the students to be able to not so much talk to the teacher of that course, but to talk to other students in the courses because students talk and they're going to be honest and they're going to give the good, the bad and the ugly about um, the AP class. And hopefully it's more on the on the good um, and then things that have helped them overcome challenges. But if you're thinking about taking an AP course, first think about what courses do you enjoy most in school? If you say, I am not a math person, then AP Calculus may not be the course for you. Um, or if you love uh, psychology, then or you're very interested in that, then that would be a, a great course for you to take. So take things that you're going to enjoy because it is going to be a labor of love. And then also think about what college majors you're considering and see what their requirements are. And it may be um, that the course that you want to take is not a requirement for your major, but it may uh, fulfill an elective in your major or may get rid of one of those like, you know, everybody has to have a general science course for whatever major in college and science is not your thing. So you take um, AP biology or AP environmental science and you earn the credit and that's done. And you don't have to take that in college. Um, foreign languages offer tons of hours of credit. So for AP Spanish, I believe you can earn between um, seven and nine hours of credit. And that is awesome if you are trying to register for classes um, early. So if you're a freshman and you don't want all eight o'clock classes in college, it kind of puts you in the higher tier for when you can for when you can register. Um, but think about what you want to do and how the courses that you might take would fit into that. And after you've done that, then you are more than welcome and we invite you to come talk to the individual teachers about, you know, what would fit. And you need to also think about your schedule. Um, you know, if you are bogged down as a sophomore, or as a junior, don't load those classes in then. So I think it's really sort of a long term planning process of you know, what do you want to take and your interests may change from year to year and that's OK. That's the beauty of um, the AP courses. One more thing and I forgot to mention this with um, with the AP versus dual enrollment. So with AP courses, um, let's say you got you have a rough year and you don't in the course do as well as you would have liked. Um, that goes on your high school transcript, but it does not go on your college transcript and you can cancel your AP exam score whenever you want to. Whereas with the dual enrollment course, that is on your college transcript. So if you, um, you know, earn a D in a dual enrollment course, that follows you right into college. Whereas AP, it's sort of a clean slate. And what we found and what the College Board has said is that students who earn a two, and a two is not considered a passing, but students who earn a two, they're recognized as being college ready because they've shown that they have the work ethic to do an AP course. They just need a little bit more time with the material and um, they'll get that in college. And it, that two, even that two provides a wonderful foundation for our students. So this is a resource page where, um, and again, this will be posted where you can go and look and see um, what courses you might want to take. You can look at the, um, the college and uh, placement criteria um, and policies. And then um, through AP Potential, um, the College Board can kind of track and recommend based on um, uh, standardized test scores what subject areas you may do well in. And that's what that AP potential is for. You're not locked into those AP potential courses, but um, that gives you a little bit of a, some guidelines and, and some framework. And if you have questions about that, our guidance department 
department will be more than happy um, during your IGPs to you know pull up that AP potential and see um, you know what areas of strength you have and um, try to capitalize on that. So that concludes our um, presentation and I'll see if there are any questions. So no questions. OK, so um, we want to thank you for joining us on a Wednesday night. And please know that if you um, students, if you're at school and you have individual questions, um, you're more than welcome to come talk to me. Um, I'm Miss Schutzler. I'm in C104. Um, and you can talk to guidance. You Really, you can talk to any of your subject area teachers and they can kind of steer you in the right direction. But um, definitely think about taking at least one AP course. Um, we do have our AP Scholars Academy and we're not as active this year with um, our social distancing requirements and regulations, but um, our students who take uh, seven AP courses over the course of the high school career, so that'd be like one in ninth grade and then two um, tenth 11th and 12th each year, then they're recognized at graduation as being AP scholars, which is a, a really neat thing to have. And you're again, you're building your portfolio for the future. Um, but we would be more than happy to talk about any of these things with you and then definitely talk to our current AP students because they have some um, invaluable advice for you on how to navigate the course. All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Seven AP courses.